Hey friends, it's Utashio here, or Steven, depending on your pronunciation, and this video is a complete guide discussing everything you need to know about Kali's favor using sacrifice altars in Spelunky 2. Many Spelunky veterans will likely already be familiar with some more intimate Kali sacrifice details, but for those who are new to Spelunky or just looking for a refresher, I will provide an explanation of favor points and related mechanics, as well as cover all sacrifice values and rewards for different items and creatures. This guide is all-encompassing, so see the description for timestamps if you're only looking for certain pieces of information. Whether you're a veteran from Spelunky 1 or brand new to the series with Spelunky 2, there is no doubt that you've come across Kali sacrifice altars in your runs. These are the black and gray skull-covered altars topped off with a tasty layer of bright red blood that are owned by the mysterious Spelunky goddess Kali. The basic function of these altars is for the player to bring certain items or creatures and drop them on the altar to sacrifice them to the goddess. Sacrificing creatures will please Kali and will generate a number of favor points based on the quality of creature sacrificed, which will in turn prompt her to reward the player depending on how many favor points they have accrued with her at this point in time. Important thing to note is that favor points do not carry over between runs, but favor points do carry over between levels within the same run meaning any favor points you gain or lose at your first altar will be added or subtracted to any favor points gained at any subsequent altars. I will go into more detail and discuss other functions of the altar a bit later in this video. The number and location of altars in each run is completely randomized with the run itself, which means you never know when or where you will find an altar or how much further you have to go to reach the next one. That being said, it is possible for an altar to spawn on almost any given level, with a couple exceptions. No altars will spawn on floor 1-1, 1-4 where Quillback is, Olmec's Lair, the hidden area Abzu, Tiamat's Throne, or Hundun's Hideaway. On the flip side of this token, there are a couple levels that have guaranteed altars that you can always count on, as well as some special altars with unique properties unlike the standard altars. As mentioned, the player will gain favor points with Kali when they sacrifice creatures at her altar. The number of favor points gained for each sacrifice depends on the creature that is sacrificed as well as whether that creature is living or dead. Dead creatures will always yield half the favor points they would if they were sacrificed alive. On screen I have provided a helpful table that shows all the sacrifice values for each creature in the game so you know exactly what you need to sacrifice in order to reach certain amounts of favor points. Feel free to pause the video or come back to this timestamp if you need to reference this table at any point. As you can see, pets yield the highest sacrifice value, giving you 8 favor points if sacrificed alive, followed closely by 6 favor points for live spelunkers if playing multiplayer, 6 favor points for live hired hands, 6 points for live shopkeepers, although good luck with that one, and six favor points for any other live, non-monster NPC such as Yang, the Turkey Man, or Van Horsing. The favor point values then begin slowly dropping off for most of the remaining non-boss creatures in the game. Now that you know the sacrifice values for each creature, you will know exactly how many favor points you can gain with Kali at any given altar. This leads into the rewards that Kali will bestow upon the player for sacrificing creatures. I provided another helpful table that will summarize all the rewards the player will receive from Kali depending on how many favor points they have earned. Let me walk you through it. Kali gifts the player with specific items at intervals of 8 favor points, meaning they will receive rewards when they have 8 total, then again at 16 total, then 24 favor points, and so on every plus 8. As soon as a player sacrifices a creature that causes them to reach or pass over a favor point interval shown in the table, they will receive the reward. For example, sacrificing one live pet will earn the player eight favor points and immediately grant them the first reward which will be randomly selected from the list in the table of either a compass, spectacles, spring shoes, spike shoes, climbing gloves, paste, pitcher's mitt, cape, or skeleton key. The player will always be gifted an item from this list that they do not already have, so you won't need to worry about duplicates. If by some miracle, however, you already possess all of these items, when you hit the first 8 point threshold, Kali will simply reward you with 3 bombs in the form of a bomb bag. 
The next tier reward happens when you acquire 16 favor points. This reward will always be the extremely useful Kapala item, and it is one of only two ways to acquire this rare item. If you already have a Kapala from the alternate method when you hit 16 favor points, you will still be rewarded with another Kapala that does not stack, essentially making this stage a useless reward. Starting at 24 favor points, and then again every 8 additional points, you will be rewarded with a royal jelly for a good health boost. An interesting interaction with favor points that is important to note is the cursed status. If you are unaware of the cursed status, I have another video explaining everything you need to know about being cursed in Spelunky 2 linked on screen. While cursed, one of the methods to cure yourself involves sacrificing something at a Kali altar that gets you to 16 favor points. The easiest method for doing this is sacrificing two live pets. Upon hitting 16 favor points while cursed, the player will be cured, but they will receive no rewards, essentially pushing all of the rewards back by 8 points. This means the player will now receive the Kapala at 24 points instead of 16, and Royal Jellies starting at 32 points. Last thing to mention in this section is that favor points can be lost. Any time an altar is destroyed, whether it be intentionally by the player, or by some unfortunate environmental mishap, the player will lose 16 favor points. If this causes the player to go into a negative favor value, Kali will summon a large group of monsters to ambush the player. However, if the player had more than 16 favor points when the altar was destroyed, they will still lose the 16 points, but no monsters will spawn as they did not drop below zero. Any rewards already gained once in a run cannot be gained again by losing points below a threshold and then gaining points to pass over it again. For example, if a player was already rewarded for getting 8 favor points and they destroy a Kali altar, this will set them to negative 8 points which will spawn a bunch of monsters. If they then gain enough points in the same run to get back up to positive 8 favor points, they will not be rewarded for this tier because they already achieved it once. One very specific and unique application of the Kali Sacrifice Altars is acquiring the True Crown item. The True Crown is an item that once collected will teleport the player randomly every 22 seconds of the game until they either win or die. Every time the player gets teleported, they will be rewarded 22 bombs. This is an extremely high risk item. I am working on another video specifically dedicated to the True Crown where I will discuss in more detail how to get it. For now, I will briefly summarize. Destroying the first Kali altar you see will subtract 16 favor points and will cause an NPC named Beg to spawn on the second altar that you come across. Beg will gift the player a bomb bag and disappear. Destroy the second altar after Beg leaves which will spawn another clump of enemies and will attach a ball and chain weight to the player that slows you down and makes maneuverability very difficult. Quick side note, there are a couple of ways that I'm aware of at the time of making this video to remove the ball and chain freely. The first method is having Quill back at the end of floor 1-4 roll over the ball and chain. The second method is to drop the ball and chain into a pool of lava on any level where lava is present. And the final method that I'm currently aware of is having a ball and chain environmental obstacle found in the Volcana Zone drop down on top of your ball and chain. It is likely that there are other means to destroy the ball and chain, such as having Olmec stomp on it, but the three that I mentioned are the only ones that I know work for sure at the time of this video. Back to the True Crown. Destroy the third altar that you come into contact with after destroying altars 1 and 2 and talking to Beg, and this will summon another large group of enemies, attach a ball and chain onto the player again if they don't already have one, and immediately curse the player dropping them to 1 health and spawning the ghost. If you manage to survive all of this and make it to a fourth Kali altar in the same run, you will see Beg standing on it again. At this point, Beg will finally gift the player with the true crown item. It is also possible to sacrifice a handful of specific items on a Kali Altar, which unlike sacrificing creatures, will not award favor points, but will result in their own specific rewards. I will display another table showing the rewards for sacrificing each sacrificable item. 
The first item on the list is the idol. Sacrificing this gold idol on the Kali altar will spawn a golden monkey creature in its place. The monkey is harmless to the player and will wildly hop around pooping out gold every so often before eventually despawning. The player can gain quite a bit of gold from a full duration gold monkey, but it does take some time to collect it all, as well as maneuvering around wherever the monkey goes. It is also possible, and very likely, for the monkey to be killed by spikes or other traps right away, which can be a waste of the money you would have otherwise gotten from turning in the idol. So use wisely. Sacrificing the Tusk Idol item has the same exact effect, also spawning a gold monkey. If at any point you are able to find a present from a shopkeeper or alternative method, you may sacrifice the present before opening it on an altar to receive an eggplant. The eggplant isn't immediately helpful, but is used in a long convoluted process to reach the eggplant world, which I will cover in another video. The next item that can be sacrificed is a simple rock. This trick, however, will only work if the player already has at least 16 favor with Kali. When sacrificing a rock, if they have 16 favor, the player will be rewarded with an arrow in exchange. The next interaction is very interesting. If you've ever come across a dice rolling mini game, shopkeeper, and felt completely ripped off by the fairness of the game or the rewards received, there is an alternative solution. If you happen to find one of these dice rolling shops on the same floor where there is a Kali altar, you may steal the dice from the shop, noting that this will anger the shopkeeper and sacrifice the dice on the altar. Kali will reward you with different items depending on what the total number displayed on both dice are when they're sacrificed. For example, if you sacrifice the two dice displaying a three and a four, that adds up to a total of seven. Having a dice total of seven means that Kali will reward the player with a machete, as opposed to if the dice total was nine, the player would instead receive a cooked turkey. See the table provided for reference if you are looking to receive a specific reward and note that the dice can be thrown and repeatedly re-rolled before dropping them on the altar in order to assure you get the reward that you want. Lastly, the Ushabti is the final item that can be sacrificed to Kali. The Ushabti is a special totem-like item that can only be found in a background cave on floor 6-2 in the Neo-Babylon zone. Sacrificing the Ushabti on the altar will reward the player randomly with either a caveman, a helping hand NPC, or a turkey. The last thing that I want to discuss about altars in Spelunky 2 are the handful of unique altars that can be found in specific locations or after completing specific tasks. Many of these altars have unique and new functions that all lend themselves towards specific goals. The first unique altar that the player may encounter is a regular looking Kali sacrifice altar located in the City of Gold. The City of Gold is a special hidden floor that can only be accessed through a golden door on floor 4-2 in the Temple of Anubis Stone if the player possesses the Hedget or Crown and is carrying the Scepter weapon from killing Anubis. Inside the City of Gold, this altar can be found with a very large insignia of the Ankh item in the background above it. This altar functions exactly the same as a regular Kali altar and can be used in all the same ways, but it also has a bonus effect. If the player currently has the Ankh item that revives them once upon death, they may drop themselves onto this altar specifically, sacrificing themselves instantly. This will kill the player, but the Ankh will be consumed and the player will be transported to the next bonus area called Duat, which is one of the essential paths required to get a hidden ending in the game. The next unique altar the player will encounter is in this secret Duat world that was just accessed using the City of Gold altar. Unlike most other levels where the player is attempting to descend or go down, in Duat, the player will be trying to climb up. Most of the way up towards the top, the player will eventually encounter a special Kali altar that is completely gray and black with no red bloodstain on top of it. Unlike other Kali altars, you cannot sacrifice creatures or items on this altar, but instead, a reward will already be sitting on top of the altar waiting for you, depending on how many favor points you have earned with Kali up until this point. I have provided another table on screen depicting the rewards at the Duat altar, depending on the player's favor points. If the player has between 8 and 16 favor points earned with Kali, upon reaching Duat, 
they will find a single cooked turkey on the altar waiting for them for a slight health boost. If the player has between 16 and 24 favor points when they reach Duat, the reward will be a bomb bag instead. Having between 24 and 32 favor points will reward the player a large bomb box. And finally, if the player has 32 favor points or more, they will find a power pack waiting for them on the Duat altar. The last unique altar in Spelunky 2 is further along than both the previous altars and can be found in the fifth zone, the Ice Caves. Unlike other zones that typically have four floors each, the Ice Caves in Spelunky 2 is just one very large floor. Somewhere in the Ice Caves, the player may encounter a more standard looking gray stone altar that is topped with purple instead of red. This altar is in fact not a Kali altar at all, but an eggplant altar. None of the previously mentioned features of Kali altars apply to this eggplant altar, and its only purpose is to sacrifice an eggplant on top of it. If the player acquired an eggplant earlier in the run by sacrificing an unopened present on a Kali altar, and they carried it all the way to this point, they may sacrifice the eggplant on this altar, which will open the mouth of the nearby Moai statue. This will reveal a small background cave where the Eggplant Child NPC is hiding. The Eggplant Child is essential in order to reach the rare and hidden Eggplant World. For more details on how to get to the Eggplant World, see my guide video on getting there. Alright everybody, thanks for watching. That was my complete guide on everything related to Kali Altars and sacrificing in Spelunky 2. If you found the video helpful and informative, please hit that like button and don't forget to share with other people who might be looking for the same information. I'm going to be releasing many Spelunky videos breaking down everything, including all 54 items, so if that's information that you guys would find helpful, please be sure to subscribe. Alright, bye bye